the chart input is our first tab that has an output. Now we're going to scroll through here and check out some of the different things that are calculated and how they're displayed. Essentially you have your range in this first column and it automatically calculates to 2,000 yards. You have the option for a range increment of 25 yards, 50 yards, 75, up to 200. So if you want to get a lot of data in a small space you can do 200 yard increments. Now we also see here that we have a drop, wind, spin, drift, target lead, time of flight, velocity, and energy calculation. Now each one of these columns either will have your units or they will have the capability to change units. So drop, right now we're in minutes of angle. We can calculate that in clicks. If you remember, in our load tab, we selected quarter minute of angle clicks. So at 1,000 yards, we've got 82 clicks, which would, should be four times our minutes of angle. So 20 minutes of angle, that's about right. So we'll look at our drop in clicks. And I like to use wind output in minutes of angle because all of our reticles have hash marks left and right to hold for wind. So I'll usually configure drop in clicks, wind in minutes of angle. Now if you, if you need to change any of the column widths, it's really easy. You can just grab a bar and you can shorten some of these up a little bit and get a little more information on your screen. The spin drift output right here is uh, pretty unique and right now it's configured in minutes of angle. Uh, it's interesting to be able to calculate uh, what the drift of your bullet is for different ranges and we'll go into the inputs that are required for that in the advanced features section. Once you're pretty familiar with the way the chart output works and the different settings and configurations that you can do,